Using classes is how we're able to take our code and compartmentalize it and make reusable objects. So when we think of a class, functions as we looked at previously are a great way to organize our code. And classes inside our class we will organize our code very similar to what we did with the functions. But what happens when we use the class is that means we now have a blueprint or a template. And that template means we can then put that item on screen as many times as we want. So we'll be working towards the thousand object homework. So you're putting a thousand copies of objects that are now all moving independently of each other on screen. Now you could hard code that in line by line and if it takes 10 lines of code for one object times that by a thousand that's a pretty crappy program to write. So we, we should be able to do something a little bit more efficiently and that's what we're going to endeavor to do. So we're going to use this kind of object class and we'll call it a car because we'll just make a box maybe put some wheels on it and whatever else makes you happy and work with it that way and we'll draw it but we'll first start out just with a rectangle you can customize your vehicle to your heart's content but we'll just start out with the simple rectangle we'll call it a car because of its basic shape and work with it that way now there's a specific syntax that we're required to follow when we make a class and that syntax is we start with the word class. So it kind of seems obvious, but yeah, we do. Now, we then include the name of our class. By tradition or convention, classes begin with a capital letter. So functions, variables, those types of things, we typically begin with the lowercase letter. But classes, we begin with a capital letter. It makes it easier for us to see them in our code, to know that this is not a variable. We can now know it's a class object. But again, what we're doing when we make the class is we're making a template. It's the blueprint. And then we can stick that object on screen. So to do that, we need to then build the class. So we have the word class, the name. We have the starting curly, closing curly. The data is the variables that are unique to this particular object. And the best part is once we set up our class object, that each time we make a new one, it can have its own version. So then each object will have a new speed, a new location, it can have a new color, a new size. We can put all these different parameters on it so that the objects, well, they're behaving in a similar manner are intrinsically unique instances of that class. So the class is just the template. It's not the actual item itself. So with this are common items that we will put in the data. Will be we have our x, we have our y, we have our width, we have our height, we can have a speed, we can have a color. These are all different items that we will put with it. So if I just say float x, now it's possible that I can define these items each on its own line, float x, float y, float w, float h, but if they're all of the same type, x, y, width, height, speed x, if they're all the same type, I can just put them on one line. So you, you don't have to put them on one line, but if you have short variable names, that can be useful. If they're longer names, then that gets kind of ugly. And then I will say color C. And color has to be on its own because it's a different type of variable. It's a different data type. After you have set all of the data or variables for your class, then what we do is we have our class constructor. The class constructor is where we then populate those data elements. Ah, we hit return at the wrong spot here. Okay. Now it, it's 
It's having a weird indent issue sometimes in processing where it misbehaves. One thing that I've found where suddenly you're clicking but it's not typing where you're clicking. If you go under edit and you choose auto format, then it kind of realigns everything and then your cursor corresponds to where you're actually trying to type. So just keep that in mind of the edit auto format or command T will be your friend. Okay, so at this point I do have to put things in separate lines, but if I say x is equal to 100, y is equal to, no, I'll just say 100, why not? And width is equal to 100, and height is equal to 50, speed x is equal to 5, and C is equal to color 255 comma 0 comma 0. You can color your object however you want. I'm just going to start out with a red object. So I've determined an X and Y location, I've determined a width, I've determined a height, I've determined a speed X. So that means I will have a horizontal movement vector. Now, I've provided data, I've populated that data, I've given it values here inside my constructor. But to use it and to be able to do something with this car, because I will say, hey, I want this new car, and processing will say, great, you can have a car, I'll allow it. But I have no method, I have no function or way of saying why don't you show me that car on screen so it doesn't have it yet now the two there's a couple methods that I like to reuse frequently when I have visual display objects void update and then I will have void display. And if this is starting to feel deja vu to what we just did with functions, it should because what we put inside of here should be um, very similar because on our update we will then specify our color and then I'm going to draw my rectangle at x comma y y comma W comma H. We'll figure out the update in just a little bit. Oh no, we we know what's going on. We can do it here. So if we take X and add speed X to it, so now our car has the ability to update its position and the car can display itself on screen. So now I have a complete object. The final thing to do is to get this car into my main program. So not in this class. And that means it needs to somehow be appear in draw. So I it won't be complete if I type this in. I'll get error messages and all kinds of stuff, but really what I want to say is car.update and car.display. Now the problem is my program has no idea what car is, but car is going to be an instance of my car v1 class. So it's going to be constructed from that class. But right now my program has no idea what car is, so it would make sense to tell it. And if I want to tell it what it is, I need to create that object. Car v1, car. Oh, not v2, that's a typo. We will have a v2 in a little while. So now I've created that car. Well, I've created a a spot in memory for it, but I haven't actually made it yet. And this is the key thing is I, there's a magic word that I haven't 
thrown out yet. And that magic word is new. I haven't said, car, I want you to be a new car. I want a new car. So inside my setup is where I can then say, car is equal to new car v1. Oh, and then a couple of parentheses there. So now car is equal to a new instance, a new copy of car v1. And then my draw function will tell car to update and it will tell it to display. Now there's a little problem in my update in that my car, when it hits the edge of the screen, it's gonna keep on going. I didn't put the bounce into it yet. Well, I'll add that in in a moment, but I'm not too worried about it with car one. When we work in car v2, where we will have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight instances of it, this car v2 is gonna be a little bit more powerful, then we will be concerned about that. So if I hit run, oh, there it goes off screen. That's stop it and run it again. Now I'm not refreshing my background or doing any of that so if I want to rehash the lesson from before I can even say clear background but then I will need to define what that is by saying void clear background And in this case, I'll just say background 128, just fill it with gray. So now if I hit go, I'll see there's my car moving across the screen. And if I want to add bounce in, I can do that inside my update. So I update it by speed x and then say if x is greater than with or x is less than zero, speed x times equals minus one. And then we can get the bounce. Now, if we don't want it to go all the way off on the right, we have to modify width by width minus w, or the width of the object. And now the object can bounce on screen. It's not particularly exciting. Now, this gives us a bounce, but if we wanted to do, say, an Asteroids game wrap, so when you hit one side of the screen, you wrap to the other side, so you create that looping effect. That's another type of animation we could do. And I'm just going to demonstrate that now. So instead of using the sidewall bounce, we'll go for an asteroid wrap, just so you have more options as you choose how to work with or animate your objects. Because if we say if x is greater than with, meaning I have run off screen, we'll set x equal to 0 minus the width of the object. Else if x is less than minus w, or z 0 minus w, which is just minus w, x is equal to width. And I need one more closing curly to wrap that out. And now we have an asteroid wrap going on. Now it Right now, I actually only needed the far side because it's only moving in one direction. But um, this would take into account if there was some event that could cause my object to also be going back to the left. I'm just so in the habit of if I'm going to wrap it from one side, I will also wrap it to the other. So I didn't even realize I only needed the one. So we can see now. Oh. 
So if our x value becomes more than the width, so we cross over here, it takes x and makes it over here negative width, so then it appears to come in from the other side. I mean, if we just said zero, it would reappear completely. It would kind of grow on screen. That's of car V1. Unless you want to retype everything, go nuts. Copy it. And then I'm going to stick that into car V2. But I do have to change because my class name must match my constructor name. And car V2 does not match car V1, so I need to change that to a 2. And now the red message goes away. So car V2 and car V1 at this moment are identical classes. So with car V2, to set it up so that it now has some randomness to it of where it's going to appear, what I'm going to do is we'll start out first and just change its possible locations. And if I say a possible location that car V2 can spawn, and if I just type in the word random, now random takes a value. But random also can take two values. So I can say a bottom number and a top number. So if I said something like, oh, I don't know, 50. And let's see how big's my movie here. 800 wide, 500 tall. So, and we know the object's 100 wide. So I would want to be 100 plus 50 in from the edge. So then that would be 650 because 100 is the width of my object and then 50 off of that, so 650. And then I'll do a similar item for the top, random. I'll say 50, and this time it was 500, so take 100 off of that, that'd be 400. That means curvy 2 is going to spawn in a random location. So now car v2 will spawn at a random location, otherwise it's identical to car v1. I'm also going to then give it so it can have a random color so we can better identify what it is. And if I say random 255, random 255, random 255. So it's going to be some completely random color. I have no idea what the color is going to be. It'll be some random number, random value. So to now stick a version of it on screen, I'll say car v2, car2. Car2 is equal to a new instance of car v2. Now I can just say car 2 dot update car 2 dot display. So by doing this I now end up with two cars on screen. We can see I got a purple car or bluish purple car and my red car. Now if I run it again, it will be a different color and it will spawn in a different location. Wow, that's an ugly color. But it spawns in a different location. Run it again. Run it again. Oh look, they're on top. Oh, they're hugging. How sweet. But each time it runs, it gives it a new color and a new location. car v2, car 3. I'm going to stick out another instance of it and I'll say car 3 is equal to new car v2. And then we can tell car 3 to update and display. Now if I run it I should see three cars on screen. I think car v2 should have a random speed option as well. So it's not moving at the same, if they're all moving at the same speed, that's just not nearly as interesting. 
And because we have access to random, speed x instead of being five, we could say random, put a minimum speed of two, and I could put a stop speed of say seven. So this car could go slower or faster than car V1. This is the improved model. There's actual a variable acceleration on it. So it, it's high tech. And now we can see the cars are moving at, all three cars are at different speeds. And our original V1 apparently has the bigger engine because it's going faster than the other two.